strong Jesus keep me from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long as I walk let me for Sunday, September 12th, and the week thereafter. I'm Pastor Amanda Schultz-Garcia here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Cashton. I'm also the pastor at Bethany and Emmanuel Lutheran Churches, and together we make up the Cashton Three Point Parish. It is our joy to be able to worship with you today. Whether you are worshiping by cable TV or YouTube, you are a valuable, integral part of our worshiping community. Please know that I hold you in prayer. I invite you to contact our parish office if you have any questions or desire a visit. This is our time to be together, to hear the promise of God, to taste and see the goodness of his forgiveness in Holy Communion, and our time to sing. So I invite you to fully participate today. We will be celebrating Holy Communion, and Holy Communion is God's gift of grace for all of God's people, and everyone is welcome. You can use bread or crackers, wine or juice. I will also offer a blessing for those who are not taking the elements of Holy Communion. So let us worship. Let us worship together. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives us all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin, knowing the promise of God to hear us. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear this word of promise. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. 
by grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. based on our gospel text today. Jesus invites us to a way of celebration, meeting and feasting with the humble and poor. Let us walk his way with advocacy. Jesus beckons us to a way of risk, letting go of our security. Let us walk his way with bravery. Jesus challenges us to listen to the voices of those who have nothing to lose. Let us walk his way with empathy. Jesus points us to a way of self-giving where power and status are overturned. Let us walk his way with justice. Jesus calls us to follow the way of the cross where despair is transformed into the promise of life. Let us walk his way with joy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Let us pray. Lord God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. 
The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea in Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said all of this quite openly, And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, Christ our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our encourager and guide. Do you remember where you were when President John F. Kennedy was assassinated? When Princess Diana died in a tragic car accident? When children were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary? Do you remember where you were when 20 years ago the Twin Towers in New York City collapsed after being struck by airplanes that had been hijacked by terrorists? Do you remember where you were when you experienced great sadness? Do you remember where you were when you knew great joy? Do you remember where you were when you heard some news that changed the course of your life forever? I have a feeling that the story in our gospel text today, when Jesus has some words to say about what it means to be a disciple, that this became a day that the disciples always remembered. They remembered where they were the day that Jesus told Peter, get behind me, Satan. And they remembered the day that Jesus told them, it will sometimes feel like death to be my disciple. These words of Jesus shift everything 
Up until now, the disciples have been witnessing Jesus heal people. The woman who was bleeding, the little girl who died, the deaf man. The disciples have witnessed miracles. Jesus walking on water and feeding 5,000 people with just one lunch basket. Following Jesus has been uplifting and encouraging. Jesus was this cool guy who made amazing things happen, restored people to community, and was gaining great fame. Also to be with Jesus was to truly know the love and the power of God. And then Jesus says to them, Who do you say I am? The Messiah, they answer him. The Savior, obviously Jesus, you are sent from God. Just look at all the amazing things you can do. And then Jesus continues, This road is not easy. And Jesus gives the first of three predictions that he makes about his suffering and his death and his resurrection. Boom. In this prediction, in these hard words, the disciples experience a shift, a drastic change. Now the disciples have heard that when you follow Jesus, when you are a part of the mission of the Savior of the world, it's not all roses and healing and dinner parties. And the disciples remember where they were when they heard Jesus say, those who want to save their life will lose it. And everything changed. To be a disciple of Jesus sometimes, most of the time, means that you do hard things, make unpopular decisions, and take dangerous actions. We follow Jesus even when it's hard. And we too realize that sometimes being saved feels like dying. I remember where I was when six years ago I heard a sermon on this text by my friend, Pastor Stacy Naylene Carlson, and she told this story. Barbara Brown Taylor, author and theologian, wrote of a time that she and others helped a huge loggerhead turtle that was stranded on the beach to return to the ocean. Tire chains were wrapped around the turtle's front legs in order to drag her on her back. The sand dunes were so deep that the turtle's mouth filled with sand as she went. Her head bent so far back underneath her that Barbara feared that the turtle's neck would break. But when the turtle was released on the edge of the water, every wave brought life back to her, washing the sand from her eyes and making her shell shine again. Watching her swim slowly away after her nightmare ride through sand dunes, Barbara noted that it's sometimes hard to tell whether you are being killed or being saved by the hands that turn your life upside down. Following Jesus has the capacity to turn our lives upside down. And sometimes it's hard to tell whether we're being killed or being saved. The hands that saved that loggerhead turtle were the hands that drug her through the sand to the water's edge, and every wave that washed over her was part of her salvation. We too have been carried to the water's edge. At the baptism font, waves of water washed over us for our salvation. Waves of grace and mercy united us with Christ forever. We died in that water. We were buried with Christ, united with him in a death like his, so that we may certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Take up your cross, Jesus says. Maybe so we can remember and proclaim 
No more sacrifice is needed. Death has already been defeated. This body is beloved. Pain is inevitable. But it will not destroy you. Take up your cross, Jesus says. Feel the pain of life in this world because heartbreak is holy. It will not be for nothing. First the pain and then the rising and Jesus promises, I am with you. Do you remember when you experience the palpable presence of God? The real, true love of Jesus, those Holy Spirit moments that still give you goosebumps when you think about them. We will always remember where we were when tragedy happened or we learned of life-changing news. We will always remember when it felt like we were dying or when something so joyful happened that we finally knew that we were living. Do you remember when? I know that you do. And so I pray, when you remember these holy moments, that you will also remember that though they are hard, though they are transforming, though they may feel like death, Christ is always with you. Amen.
Let us together confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Nurture your church wherever we gather, that we would experience and share your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to land devastated by tornadoes, floods, fires, and disasters. Restore forests, fields, and waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for those in danger. Strengthen first responders, doctors, nurses, and all who serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, on this anniversary date of 9-11, we carry a heavy burden of memory. We remember the heroism of those who lost their lives in saving others. We remember all who suffered and died, and grieve for them, friends and strangers alike. In this prayer, we also commit to peace. We commit ourselves to actions that will draw us closer to one another and the justice that you'd intend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the sick and the healing, the dying and the grieving. We remember before you the saints who have gone to live with you eternally. Be with those in need, those we name before you now out loud or silently in our hearts. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in sighs too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May you always remember the presence of God and the peace of Jesus. Peace be with you this day. I thank you for your continued financial support of our churches and ministries. Your gifts truly make a difference, not only in our ability to continue our online ministry, but in communities around the world. We are able to share what you offer to truly make a difference in the lives of others. You can give online a one-time or recurring gift or mail your offering directly to our parish office. Again, thank you. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives and nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. As we sing together, let us prepare our hearts, our bread or crackers, wine or juice for Holy Communion. Let us sing.
with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise to God, who out of sheer grace and pure love came to live among us as Jesus. May we never forget when we heard the transforming news of Christ that we are forgiven by the grace of God, that Christ has died for our sins, but that by the power of God he was resurrected again so that we can hold fast to the promise of everlasting life. As we prepare our hearts for communion, we remember these words, that in the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And just as our Lord boldly loves us, he taught us to boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take your bread, your crackers, and hear this promise. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. As you drink your wine, your juice, may you hear this word, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. If you're not taking the elements of Holy Communion during worship today, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead, remembering that you have been named and claimed in the love and grace of God no matter what. And now may this, the body, the blood, and the blessing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, may we remember when we tasted your goodness, grace, and forgiveness in this meal. May this night we remember continue to transform us so that we would go forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We join together in our sending litany. Jesus said, take up your cross. We will follow you, O Christ, into the needs of the world, into the truth of our lives, into the presence of God. Amen. And as you follow Jesus, may you remember this, that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord will look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophy last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. by the world has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary so I cherish the old rugged my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown cross stained with blood so divine wondrous beauty I see for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me so I cheer rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God be with you till we meet again. <laughs>